ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech the best of speech is the words and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have to live that good and righteous life to make it to jannah is the guidance of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs that we can do is to newly invent matters into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fil nar every going astray and every misguidance is in the hell fire thumma amma ba'd an al harith ibn suwaid haddathana abdullah ibn mas'ud bi hadithayn ahaduhuma عن نفسه والآخر عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال عبد الله إن المؤمن يرى ذنوبه كأنه في أصل جبل يخاف أن يقع عليه وإن الفاجر يرى ذنوبه كذباب وقع على أنفه قال به هكذا فقال this hadith in the sunnah of At-Tirmidhi, and it is an authentic sahih hadith, the Prophet or Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he narrated two hadiths, one from himself and one from the Prophet In the version of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, the believer sees his sins as if he's at the base of a mountain, afraid that his sins will crush him, crumble and crush him. But the fajr, the corrupt person, the wicked person sees his sins as if they're just a fly, annoying, falling upon his nose, and he just waves at it like this to just swat it away, to get them to fly away. Although we constantly remind ourselves that we need to look at our sins, look at the wrong that we've done and that we do, to question ourselves and reckon ourselves, this is never without also knowing and reminding ourselves that Allah is... Merciful, that Allah will forgive your sins. Anas ibn Malik, he narrates from the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا ابْنَ آدَمُ إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي غَفَرُتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ فِيكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي يَا ابْنَ آدَمُ لَوْ بَلَغَتْ ذُنُوبُكَ عَنَانَ السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ اسْتَغْفَرْتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي يَا ابْنَ آدَمُ إِنَّكَ لَوْ أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة. This hadith Qudsi we have is in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. It's rated as Hassan and acceptable and fair. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that Allah عز وجل he said and this is a hadith Qudsi. A hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم relates about something Allah says. Allah, blessed and most high, He says, O son of Adam, verily as long as you call upon me and hope in me, I forgive, I forgive, I forgave you, despite whatever has occurred from you. And I did not mind to forgive you. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, then you sought forgiveness from me. I would forgive you, and I would not mind forgiving you. 
O son of Adam, if you came to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, a uh, type of, uh, the number of sins that it would fill the whole earth, and you did not associate partners with me, you did not commit shirk, you were firm on your tawheed, you did not worship other than Allah in any single way, then I would come to you with forgiveness nearly as great as it. This is a great hadith. One that gives us the most hope and reminds us and it magnifies Allah's mercy and it magnifies Allah's forgiveness and His willingness to forgive, knowing that He created us in a weak state. So in this Allah says, Ya Ibn Adam, calling out to O son of Adam, all of mankind is called by Allah to race to forgiveness and to race to mercy. Inna kama da'outani, verily as long as you call upon me. We must call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is indeed the essence of worship. This was what displays our need for Allah, our need for help, our need for guidance, our need for protection, our need for mercy, our need for forgiveness. And you hope and you trust in Allah that He will respond to you. Then you know that Allah will accept it and this is the key to Allah's forgiveness. And an numan ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu an al-Malihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal الدُّعَاءُ هُوَ الْعِبَادَةِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in an authentic hadith in Sahih al-Tirmiri, he said, dua, supplicating to Allah, calling upon Allah, is ibadah, it is the essence of worship. ثُمَّ قَرَأَ وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدَخُلُونَ, سيدخلون جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Then he read the ayah where he said, what Allah says and means, and your Lord said, call upon me. I will respond to you. Verily, those who scorn my worship, they will surely enter Jahannam, the hellfire, in a humiliated state. So we must call upon Allah. Then he said, وَرَجَوْتَنِي And you put your hope in Allah. Knowing we are weak. خُلْقَ الْإِنسَانَ ضَعِيفَ Allah created us. He's our creator. He knows how we are. He knows how we would think. He knows where our weaknesses would be. He created us in that weak state. We were created this way, so we need Allah to fight shaitan, to fight Satan, to fight his whispers. We have to have that hope in his mercy and his forgiveness. So we run back to Allah, so that we are from those who enter Jannah. When you return to Allah and call upon him and beg for forgiveness from him, and you sincerely repent, have a firm faith that Allah will forgive you. This hope for his mercy, the fear of his punishment, they go hand in hand. As Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, the heart of a person is like a bird. The head of that bird is the love, the love for Allah, that you love Allah above anyone and anything else, that nothing comes above what Allah commanded you to do. A bird with no head cannot fly. It has no life. This is like the one who has no love for Allah. But let's say now that bird has his head, he has the love for Allah. His wings are hope and mercy. They need to be balanced. Or else, you can't see a bird flapping one wing just to, to take off, to take flight. It doesn't work that way. You have to hope in Allah's mercy and you have to fear His punishment. This is the way that you will balance hope and fear, inshallah, and you will live a life that is one solid upon belief in the true attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he reported, he said, Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqul, wahada, this was three days before his death. He said, لا يموتن أحدكم إلا وهو يحسن الظن بالله عز وجل. رواه مسلم. In Sahih Muslim, we see this authentic narration where the Prophet ﷺ, three days before he was death, he says, let none of you die unless he has good thoughts and good expectations from Allah. So you should have that expectation that Allah will forgive you and bless you with His mercy. So believe in Allah, do what He commands and obligates, stay away from His sins, stay, uh, from his, what He has made haram, عفواً, and sincerely repent if you fall into sin. And then have good expectations of Allah. Don't beat yourself up repetitively for something, so that it takes you away, because this is how shaitan will get you. Too much hope in Allah's mercy, you don't care about following the rules, you just sin and sin and sin. Too much fear of Allah's punishment, you'll despair at the mercy of Allah. You won't think you can ever get it. So you'll just plunge yourself into depression and sadness. Allah, He says, أَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعَقَابِ 
Allah says what means, know that Allah, yes, He is severe and stern in punishment, but He is also the oft forgiving and the most merciful. And there is nothing upon the Messenger وسلم, His duty وسلم, is but to convey the message. And Allah knows all that you reveal and all that you conceal. We see in an authentic narration from the Prophet that came on the way of Abu Huraira where he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, لَوْ يَعْنَمُ الْمُؤْمِنْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ الْعُقُوبَةِ مَا طَمِعَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ أَحَدٍ وَلَوْ يَعْنَمُ الْكَافِرِ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ الرَّحْمَةِ مَا قَنَتَ in this authentic narration, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, if the believer knew what Allah had in store of punishment, the possible punishments that Allah could do, and to what degree, then they would never hope for Jannah, they would never hope for paradise, because they would see that punishment, and we know that we commit the sins. But if the disbeliever, if he knew what Allah had in store of his mercy, his true mercy, then none would despair of attaining Jannah. Because they would say that mercy is so infinite that even me as a disbeliever would get it. So hope and fear, they should be balanced. Not necessarily all the time. When you find yourself sinning, you should remember fear more. You should remember the hellfire. You should remember meeting Allah, dying upon that sin, being resurrected. Committing that sin over and over again because we will be resurrected on what we die upon. Balance the two, but sometimes you need to strike more fear in your heart. And sometimes when you've repented and repented and you feel sorrow and sadness and remorse, then you should feel that hope. And sometimes you have to give them that so that you keep the balance overall. So Allah, He then said in His Hadith Qudsi, غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ فِيكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي I forgave you despite whatever, you may, whatever may have occurred from you, and I did not mind. Allah does not mind to forgive for those who supplicate to Allah, return back to Allah, run to Allah when they sin, feel that that remorse and sadness, ask for forgiveness from Allah, hope in Allah, He will forgive you. As Allah said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُوا مَنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقْفِرُ الْبَنُومَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ As Allah says in the Quran, what means, Say, O oh, Ibadi, Allah is saying, say, O oh, my, yani, say to Muhammad, oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say, O oh, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves. Afwan, Allah is saying, O oh, Ibadi, O oh, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds, by committing sins, by transgressing Allah's limits, do not despair for the mercy of Allah. Do not doubt it. Do not feel hopeless like you will never get Allah's mercy. Do not do this. Allah is saying, do not despair. Allah can forgive all sins. Allah will forgive all sins. Shirk, associating partners with Allah, meeting your direct tawbah, your direct repentance for it. Truly, He is the oft forgiving, the most merciful. This ayah should always remind us, and one we may have to remind others with, who when they have sinned, yes, we should feel remorse and sadness, but we should also know that Allah has still given the doors of repentance to be open. For us to go, to run, to repent to him and to beg him for forgiveness. Continuing that hadith Qudsi, Ya Ibn Adam, لَوْ بَلَغَتْ ذُنُوبُكَ عَنَانَ السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ اسْتَغْفَرْتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي Allah went on to say, O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, then you sought forgiveness of me, I would forgive you and I would not mind. We have a Lord that is merciful, a Lord that forgives when that repentance is sincere, he will accept that repentance. No matter how great the sin, no matter how many times you did it, they are not greater than Allah's forgiveness and mercy. Actually, you deny Allah's attributes. You deny His sifat when you doubt that He will forgive you or that He will have mercy upon you. So this forgiveness means that Allah will cover your faults, faults, remove your sins, and not punish you in the hereafter for it. This is from His mercy. So if you sin, turn to Allah quickly. Repent, seeking His forgiveness, and you will find Him ready to accept it. You will find Him ready to accept it. Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا 
أو يظلم نفسه ثم يستغفر الله يستغفر الله يجد الله غفورا رحيما and whoever does evil or wrongs himself but afterwards he seeks Allah's forgiveness he will find Allah oft forgiving and most merciful so seek his forgiveness and repent to him with tawbah and nasuha with that sincere repentance Abu Huraira he narrates that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَوْ لَمْ تُذْنِبُوا لَذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ وَلَجَاءَ بِقَوْمٍ يُذْنِبُونَ فَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ اللَّهِ فَيَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمْ In Sahih Muslim we have this beautiful hadith showing that Allah knew He was creating those who would sin and there was a purpose behind it so He could show His, يعني, his limitless mercy and forgiveness the Prophet ﷺ, he said, by him in whose hand is my life, if you were not people who sinned, if you were not to commit sin, then Allah would have swept you away and brought a people who would sin and commit sin and wrong and then seek his forgiveness so that he would forgive them. So that he would forgive them. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there's many hadith that go to this point. Anas, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, كُلَّ بَنَ آدَمْ خَطَّاءٌ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّئِنَ التَّوَّابُونَ That the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said in a hadith which is hasan and acceptable, every son of Adam commits sin and errors, but the best of those are the ones who commit those sins and then they quickly go and they repent to Allah seeking His forgiveness. So be of those who quickly return to Allah when you commit those errors or those wrongs or those sins. And it was narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who mentioned that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, إن المؤمن إذا أذنب كانت نكتة سوداء في قلبه فإن تاب ونزع واستغفر سقل قلبه فإن زاد زادت فذلك الران الذي ذكره الله في كتابه كلا بل ران على قلوبه على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون الله سبحانه وتعالى Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he said, when a believer commits a sin, a black spot appears on his heart, and if he repents and he gives up that sin and he seeks Allah's forgiveness, then the heart will be polished of that black mark. But if he continues to sin, not repenting, not seeking forgiveness, that black spot will spread and increase. And this is the ran, the covering that Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Muqtafifin in this ayah, where Allah says what means, nay, but on their hearts is a ran, a covering of sins and evil deeds that they used to earn. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, an-nadamu tawbah, nadam, regret, remorse, feeling sad and sorry for something you did wrong, an evil action, a sin, etc. This is tawbah in and of itself. And he went on to say, And the one who repents from a sin, it will be as if he did not commit that sin. This is from the mercy and the graciousness of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this tawbat al nasuha Allah, he mentions it in this ayah, where he says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbat al nasuha asa rabbukum an yukaffir ankum sayyatikum, وَيُدْخِلُكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ يَوْمَ لَا يُجْزِ اللَّهُ النَّبِيُّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ نُورُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَتْمِمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means, O oh you who believe. إخواني وإخواتي في الله When you hear, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا If you want to be a believer on the day of resurrection, you need to be all ears. Nothing else matters when those ayat are mentioned especially because it's a call out to those who want to be a believer. And Allah Azza wa Jal, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, He says, O oh, you who believe, turn to Allah with a sincere repentance. Why would Allah tell you to turn to repentance if He expected you not to sin? You're going to sin. You're going to do wrong. Minimize it. Try not to as much as you can when you fall into it. Turn to Allah, the tawbah al nasuha the sincere repentance. It may be that your Lord will remit from you your sins and admit you to gardens in which rivers flow. Jannah, rivers flow, yani jannah. The day that Allah, He will not disgrace the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and He will not disgrace those who believe with Him. 
Those who believe with him will be with him on Yom al Qiyamah. With the Prophet Sallallahu Allah will not disgrace them. Their light will run forward before them, and with their record of deeds in their right hands, they will say, Our Lord, keep perfect our light for us. Do not put it off till we cross the Sirat. The Sirat is a belief we must have. It is a slippery bridge over Jahannam, some descriptions. It's as thin as a hair or as thin as a very sharpened sword. This is how thin it is. But those will say, Our Lord, keep perfect our light for us and do not put it off until we cross the Sirat, the bridge over Jahannam, that every believer will, ha- believer will have to cross and grant us forgiveness. Verily, you are capable of doing all things. This Tawbat al Nasuha, this sincere repentance, it has shurut, it has conditions that you must feel guilty, you must feel sad, you must feel remorse for the sin you did, and this should be only for the sake of Allah, not because you got caught, not because mom and dad found out, not because your wife or your husband or your children found out, because Allah knew it, and He knows it, and now it's on your book of deeds. You should feel that remorse. You must be sincere in your tawbah. You want Allah to forgive you, because you wronged Him and you transgressed His limits. Even if you wronged others, or you made them sad by your actions, whatever. You wronged Allah. Your tawbah is sincerely for Him to repent, uh, accept your repentance. You immediately stop the sin. If it included violating somebody else's right, yeah, I mean you stole from them, you should return that thing. Resolve the intention in your heart never to perform the sin again. This is from the aspects of an accepted tawbah. And do it before it's too, before it's too late. When is it too late? When the sun rises in the west which is from the major signs of the day of resurrection, of the day of judgment, or the soul is rattling in the throat, meaning you're on the stages of death. You're on the brink of death. This is when you can't say astaghfirullah at that point, or repent to Allah at those two points. At that point, it will not be accepted. This hadith Qudsi continued, Ya ibn Adam, innaka law ataytani bi qurab al-ard, خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة. This hadith Qudsi ends with such a beautiful statement of Allah SWT, one that gives us hope no matter what sins we have done. Again, this does not give you the green light to sin saying I will make tawbah right after I do it. Allah is not a fool and He knows what you plan and He is the best of planners. This last statement of Allah in this hadith Qudsi, He said, O son of Adam, if you come to me with sins as great as the earth, forget getting to the clouds, now as great as the earth, sins upon sins upon sins, and then you met me, but you met me as a muwahid, as someone who only worshipped Allah alone without partners. You did not associate partners with Allah in worship. You're telling me this isn't worth throwing out every bit of shit you have in your life, or in your home, or with your culture. This phrase alone should make you get rid of any blue eye you have, any talisman, any ta'weez, any, any of those things that are graded along with shit. Anything. If you came to Allah with sins the grade of the earth, the, the, the size of the earth, or the amount of the earth, but you did not associate partners with Allah, you did not commit shit, you were upon a firm tawheed, he said, I would come to you with forgiveness nearly as great as it. This forgiveness that Allah will give, the mercy Allah will give, it comes with you having tawheed. You only associate, you only worshipping Allah alone without any partners. So get rid of the shirk from your lives, the shirk from your lives. That's often introduced through our cultures or the lands we're natively from. It's not worth it. Because tawheed, they will, it will extinguish the sins by Allah's forgiveness by Allah accepting our forgiveness and by His mercy, and it gets us the mercy we need to enter Jannah. ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, then لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Never despair 
of receiving the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah Allah will forgive all the sins. Even if you don't repent for them, except for shirk, it must have tawbah, it must have repentance. But sins other than that, that maybe you didn't even repent for, Allah may still forgive you for. Never despair or lose hope at getting the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Him accepting your seeking of forgiveness from Him. Abu Musa, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he said that verily Allah, He stretches out His hand by the day, by the night, afwan. For those, He stretches out His hand by night to accept the repentance of those who sinned throughout the day. And He stretches out His hand during the day so that those who sinned during the night could seek forgiveness from Him. And this will happen all the way till the sun rises in the west. If they don't rise from the west today, and as long as your soul is not ready to be taken out of your body by men of the moat, by the angel of death, you can still repent. You can seek forgiveness. Allah is waiting for you to turn to Him. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need you to go to Jannah. But you have that opportunity to make that for yourself. Ibn Umar, he narrated That the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Yunna al Mu'min Yom al Qiyama, Mir Rabbihi Azza wa Jal, Hatta Yada Alehi Kanathahu, Fayukarir, Fayukariruhu, Bidunubihi, Fayakul, Hel Ta'arif, Fayakul, Ay Rabbi Arif, Kala Fa inni, Kad Satar Tuha Aleka Fit Dunya, Wa inni, Arfiraha Leka, Al Yom, Fayurta, Sahifata, Hasanati. In this hadith we have in Sahih Muslim, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, a believer will be brought in front of his Lord on the day of resurrection. Until he places his veil, until Allah places his veil or a covering over him and makes him confess to his sins, saying, do you acknowledge your sins? Until the person says, not able to lie or hide anything, the believer will say, my Lord, I do acknowledge that I did these and Allah will say, I concealed them for you in the world. And I conceal them for you and forgive them for you today. And then he will be given the record of his good deeds. As for the unbelievers and the hypocrites, there will be an announcement before all of creation saying that they lied about Allah. Cover your sins. Seek Allah's forgiveness. And Allah will cover your sins for you and forgive you for them ta'ala on the day of resurrection. Abu Umamah he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, In Nasahab al Shimal, Liyarfa al Qalam, Sitta Sa'at an al Abd al Muslim al Mukhti, Aw al Musi'i, Fa in Nadima was stuck for Allah minha al Qaha wa illa kutiba wahida. This hadith which Shaykh al Albani he graded as Hassan, as fair and acceptable. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Verily the angel over your left shoulder that is responsible for recording your evil deeds or your wrong deeds or your sins. And this is on every human. The one on the right recording the good deeds, the one on the left recording the bad deeds and the sin. He says, verily that angel will raise his pen for six hours, a long portion of time, waiting for you to turn, for the Muslim servant, to turn sincerely to ask forgiveness of Allah, to regret his sin, to seek that forgiveness, and if you do so and it's sincere, he will throw it aside, otherwise he will record it as one sin. Where do you get that type of forgiveness and mercy? It's only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made it so easy for us to be able to turn to him. Yet many of us resort to other things, other things which are haram, to try and get through even some mistakes that we made. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمِتِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَقْرَدْ بِنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says, what means, say, O ibadi, O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sins, never despair for the, of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving and most merciful. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, with shirk, none of these sins will be forgiven and hell will be the abode. But the door of repentance is always open. 
As long as the sun doesn't rise in the west and we're still breathing and living and able to repent to Allah. And Allah's forgiveness and mercy are greater than the sins we commit. Do not belittle it, even though you cannot comprehend how grand and great His mercy and forgiveness are. So make the tawbat and nasuha when you sin. Make your sincere repentance. Don't despair. Believe that Allah will forgive you if you sincerely repent to Him. Have Believe that He will grant you His mercy if you sincerely turn to Him. Expect good of your Lord. Allah is not harmed by forgiving. So eagerly rush to Him. Run back to Him. Beg of Him. So you may be of those who He grants acceptance of your forgiveness and grants his mercy to them so that you may enter Jannah in the Ta'ala. Allahumma khil al Muslimin wa Muslimat, Mu'minin wa Mu'minat, Ahya in Hamal Amlat, Inna Ka'in Tasamir wa Khalib al Mujir al Da'wat, Ya Maqalib al Khulub Thabit Khulub al Aladinat, Ya Maqalib al Khulub Thabit Khulub al Aladinat, Ya Maqalib al Khulub Thabit Khulub al Aladinat, Subhana Rabbi Ka Rabbi al Izzati Amma Yasifun, Wa Salaman Ala al Mursaleen, Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbi al Alameen, Wa Salaman Ala Muhammad wa Ala Alihi, Wa Sahbihi Ajma'ulin.